Peace, peace, family. So I'm back with another one. Today what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to my chosen ones about how you will have to stop backtracking. You will not be able to open up any more of those doors behind you. Once that ship has sailed, it has sailed. And the only time I recommend reopening some of these past doors, these doors that's behind you, is if you're going back to run some tests, you know, you're going back to reflect, or you're going back to implement some new tactics that you learned in life and you just wanna use it for your the betterment of yourself. So backtracking, I would first use an example of like when you go to a certain store and the customer service is really bad, maybe the store doesn't always have the items you're looking for, it puts a bad condensation on that store and that location and it forces you to stray away from that store or that location. You have a certain memory embedded and a certain outcome already established in the spiritual realm as far as how you feel and connect with that location it's the same thing when it comes to us in this spiritual realm in this battle that we're in right now and when we're opening up doors going backwards ourselves. so so in the process in the process of doing these things in our mind when we tend to go backwards sometimes to just reopen doors we always have more hope and more faith than the average being that there could be a slight possibility of a change in this being but all these beings anytime you go backwards will show you that you should have never turned around and went backwards out of all my years in my life in this physical realm i have never had any one being that I've backtracked to be in a better position or present me with better energy. Not saying that they gotta give me any kind of energy. They do whatever they see fit. But what I'm saying is, you know how you value yourself. I know how I value myself. I know the reasons why I stopped dealing with them and engaging with them. Whether they left first intentionally, or I created the situation and got them out the way, or whether I removed myself first. See, a lot of people get that misconstrued too. If the other being hurry up and runs away first, that means they, they won or they got away first. Sometimes you create the environment that forces them to get away, which is the same thing as you getting away first. You just created a spiritual barrier that pushed them away, so that way they knew spiritually they couldn't get to you so physically they just went ahead and removed themselves anytime you process a backtrack the only time you would get a small percentage of a change is if it has been over I want to say anything from 7 to 10 to 15 years and most of us don't engage with people once that much time has passed and then I know a lot of beings haven't even had enough relationships with people to have that much time pass because we all still pretty young out here. Not everybody, but I'm just saying for the most part, we all are pretty young out here. See, when we backtrack, these beings on the other side of the spectrum, the ones that we're thinking about backtracking to or the ones we did backtrack to, backtracking meaning it could be a, a, just a regular friendship, just a regular communication, engaging, you know, it doesn't have to be a full out you're indulging in a, you know, one of those spousal significant relationships. Even if you crack the door for texting and phone calls, that's still a backtrack to a certain degree. These other beings, they already have their perspective of us from the data they collected by being around us or communicating and engaging with us. So it's always different when we process them in the spiritual realm, it's a little bit of hope. You know, maybe something has changed. For us, when a lot of time has passed by, because we're light beings and we tend to pull the light, 
we put all the negative stuff on the back burner. Not saying that we ever forget. We don't ever forget. We just push it to the back burner. But when we're in those, if you ever notice when we're actually in those situations, all that negative stuff sits up front. When you're in the situation, the negative sits up front and the hope has been minimized. When you're out of that situation, the hope becomes more present in the forefront and the negative gets pushed to the back burner. This is one way that you can always tell if you live in a half cup kind of situation or a half empty kind of cup situation. You know, like I was saying, a lot of these beings already got us pegged. They already have some kind of ideology of us as far as how they view us physically and how they view us spiritually. And a lot of beings are not, still aren't in a space of moving with the creator and source. They still aren't in a space of taking accountability. Even if you don't bring up any weird situations that happened, it's always still lingering in the background because it hasn't been brought to the forefront. That's why it's always important if you do backtrack to just kind of address all the weird things that transpire because it's always going to be sitting back there in the spiritual realm. So for me, I'd rather address it and see what words they choose to use at that time opposed from me being unsure of how they view it and only leaning it towards one certain angle, you know. These beings have not put in the work to remove themselves away from that demonic witchy playbook. This is one huge reason why they stay in the same vibrations that you in. You know what I mean? You have people that you may have used to communicate with and they was, let's say they were slow responders at texting and calling, you know, but they reached out to you first to reopen the door back up. Soon as you start engaging with them, they're back to their same normal tactics that they've always done, you know? It's all to see how much of your energy, your light, they can pull. Then it's also to check your barriers to see where your weak links are so they can figure out where they can extort you at or expose you at. Extort and expose. When they extort, and you have to understand, they're, they're taking good things about you and they're using it to their benefit so if you're a joyful person then they're going to want to steal that joy from you they want to extort you for your joy your love your light you know and then for the other flip side of the spectrum if they're exposing you then they're looking for all the negative things that they can utilize against you i have not in my life yet seen one being come back with good intentions you know they come back pretending to be nice and talk with a nice condensation you know may sound subtle but the overall concept and the overall viewing of it is they still in that same space they still in that same space and they feel as though they could have done their magic better or differently with you they feel like they could have used their witchcraft a little bit differently on you and towards you. So now it's like, all right, well, let me cycle back just to see if this is possible to do. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with, oh, they really cared about you. They really enjoyed you. When I say care and enjoyed you, it's on a percentage scale, meaning they probably did care a very little. They probably did enjoy you, enjoy you very, very little. But the way their playbook works, everything else overrides that. Everything overrides that. And in my world, I always ask these beings, especially in today's day and age, I'm at a space now to where over these past couple months, I've, I've already run all my testing experiences and experiments. I'm done being in that space of cracking doors back open again. You know what I mean? I tried, let's say I tried squash when I was little, to me, squash is nasty. I tried it again when I got older. Squash is still nasty, you know? 
ah, that's just me personally. I know beings who love squash, but I'm just saying, the conversation has already been put on squash, so until I change my ideology and my thought process towards things that doesn't taste so great towards me, I'm always gonna have that same vibration towards the squash. Meaning that they're still always gonna have that same vibration and conversation towards us. We putting a lot of work to get to where we at today, you know? So I just always feel as though it's important for us to be extremely aware of these tactics that's being used around us. If you haven't noticed, most people that go backwards, even in relationships, they never work out. In my life, I backtracked for one relationship, and that was my BM. And I only did that because she was the mother of my child. That was the only reason. Outside of that, I would have never done that because I'd never done it years before her. And I didn't do it after we had separated. It was just a situation had transpired. And then in my mind, before I actually took her back, we never have fully start I never fully started engaging with other women on that other level yet so when I did take her back it was like a small separation we bounced back and it was the same vibration you know what I mean male counterparts same thing you know female counterparts who tried to get in the door with me still bounce back and do the exact same thing I asked one recently like they got my number, but they decided to reach out to me on Instagram. It had been months since we talked, and I have forgot all about them. I don't follow them on social medias. So they had went out their way to go to my social media page on IG and message me. You know, hey, how you doing? I was just, you know, I was doing something, and you crossed my, my mind or something like that. And I'm just like, this is like that hey, big head text. Like, no, it wasn't, because you still present the same vibrations. You know, you could have kept that energy where it was at. A couple days had passed by and I had asked just because I'm I'm in a teaching position. So I'm always like trying to enlighten myself more. I'm like, so what was, what was the purpose of you reaching out to me if you're if you still in the same vibration? You know what I mean? And here comes the excuses. You know, I, I'm way beyond and to infinity past all the excuses that. They conjure up, you know. So I, I blatantly ignored all the damn excuses. They end up messaging me, but it was like it was like four to five texts, but they were spread out through a span of like six, seven days. Why the hell do it take six, seven days for somebody to say, "Hey, how's it going?" You respond back. Now you got to wait two days, three days later for them to respond. So now you wait a day or two before you respond. And then here they go again with another three, four days. Yeah, all of that, that's that's fishing. You're not going to keep me on a fishing line. And I don't care for keeping you on a fishing line. Clearly, I didn't care enough to even keep numbers saved or to keep following you on social medias. You know? And sometimes you have to present that honesty as blatantly and as forward as you possibly can sometimes you just got to cut ties right away you know it doesn't matter if they view you in a certain way motherfuckers gonna view us in a certain light anyway so you might as well do it how we gonna do it you know what i mean but i ain't want to run up too long i just wanted to tap in real quick and mention that it, it is no love and light and going backwards all these beings who got out your way and who you removed out your way keep it that way keep it that way i have yet to see one come back with good intentions with righteous intentions you know coming back with a change of belief system with you know more enlightenment if anything they just figured out new tactics to how to work their witchy sauce which they witchy sauce is never gonna outdo our sauce through the creator you know what i mean but tapping everything down below peace and love to the kings and queens <music>